Okay, so both of these things won't be won't take damage or die. And they will both be lethal attackers. I have to cast this right now to make it so like there it's a lethal attacker right you know, right there. And so now like they have to block with the Swain. Because they're at eight. These are both lethal attackers. Can't take damage or die. And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for our first auction deck. We're going to be playing Auction Taric. That's going to be our uh, deck here for this new Sentinels of Light champion. Pretty excited about it. It looks, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun putting these together and trying it out. Again, this is very first day, so this is going to be kind of a, a test deck. So can't expect, you know, 5-0 record <laughs> immediately right when we're playing against a lot of decks that have been around for a long time but let's try out this new champion and see what it's all about as you can see it has a lot of associated cards wow all right so we got two mana two two quick attack good body and whenever it's summoned or it strikes you summon a warlord's palace or advance it around so basically you play your auction you get this warlord's palace you get a landmark also right so it comes along with a landmark Pretty cool. It starts that countdown eight, and the reason why we're playing Taric is because whenever you target an ally, you get to um, advance it around. And of course, with Taric, we're going to be targeting a lot of allies, um, so that will help our landmark countdown. And then auction levels up when it gets to zero, levels up, and then whenever it levels up, now you get instead of the palace, now you get the warlord's horde. And again, another another uh, another new landmark out. Countdown 8 started again, same kind of thing. Um, you know, we want to target some allies and stuff, get that countdown going, and then whenever we get this Warlord's Horde to, uh, you know, to finish the countdown, that's when this gets really powerful. Because then you make this Sentinel's Horde, which you get, basically you just get to choose from one of these three cards. Um, so you either get to grant all enemies vulnerable and create a zero-cost copy of the strongest ally that died this game. And so that does mean that could be champions also, right? Zero cost copy of any ally and give everything vulnerable. Or you can draw two and have any card that you play at all cost one less this round. That could be pretty cool with like gems. If you got a whole bunch of gems, you can play them all for zero. That could be cool. Or grant all of your champions everywhere spell shield and plus two plus two pretty crazy so yeah this this looks awesome all for just a two mana card right like this is just it's not like we're investing a ton of mana in this thing and it can do a lot of stuff so looks pretty sweet let's go ahead and try it out with Tarek. um besides that I'm thinking about maybe having Tarek have like some lucky finds i think Tarek lucky find could be kind of cool so we're gonna play two copies of profiteer uh because you know like lucky find can you know buff up with like giving it you know overwhelm or spell shield or whatever you know whatever and so I'm, I'm going to try two Profiteers and one of this Vicarin Bruiser, new card. Five mana, five, five, so a really good body. And then any time it strikes, and every time it strikes, you create a lucky find. So we could get a lot of lucky finds. That could be pretty cool. So I'm just going to try out that new card. Uh, trying out a Grappling Hook. Um, an ally you've targeted this round strikes an enemy. I don't know. Good good workout. I don't know. We'll see it. This, this new pump spell, the Absolver. It, this is a card that people have been playing with Sivir to a lot of success because you level up your Sivir, uh, you know, you get plus two, plus one, and then you also get this burst speed plus two, plus one, and overwhelm, and that's pretty crazy with Sivir. You know, like for four mana, you give it plus four power and overwhelm, and then all your other stuff has overwhelm. Yeah, that card's crazy. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we got. So let's give it a try. We're going to try some Auction Taric. We'll go play five games in ranked. Ooh, playing Demacia version, so probably with like the new dragons. Alright, we got Viego, Demacia. I don't really see anything here to mulligan. Like how the goat's gonna make some gems for us. Like, gems should work well with these different landmarks. Um, yeah, kind of like everything that we got. Scores to settle, crooks to kill. You know how it is. We'll get the landmark in play first so we can start the countdown. We may even say it could start the final countdown. Let's go with the rock hopper. I know like getting gems is cool and stuff, but 
In case they wanted to have a blocker. Oh, they did not want to have a blocker. Oh, no. Grand Plaza probably means my auction's gonna die. Even though we'll be able to trade with it, but yeah, it's a 4 3. I would have to play. Yeah, man, that just worked out perfectly to get rid of the Roiling Sands, too. So, play one, two, three. I mean, I, I guess I could technically keep it alive, but I have to use a lot of spells. I have to use, like, Pill Cascade and Pill Cascade and Shapestone. Man, Grand Plaza is great. <laughs> Wait, why did, I even, why did I even play this goat? So yeah, these, all these things have Challenger. Why don't I even play the go? Should have let them attack first. Okay, this game's doing a little messy. Not looking good. Not looking good, man. These these last two rounds for my opponent have been picture perfect. <laughs> you could dream up exactly what you want to happen, man. This has been picture perfect. All right, so this VA goes about to level up. Um. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, looking pretty bad. Go to Viego deck. I think this is gonna work. You so or at least we scared them enough to block with the Viego. Oh no, does that level it up? Oh no, that levels it up. All right, so Grand Plaza with Viego, that, that's a really cool combination with like all these encroaching myths. And they, they did get to draw two of these caravan things, whatever they're called, the soldiers. They did get to have two of those. But yeah, Viego just dominated this game. All right, cool, we got another one. GG's. All right, GG's Grand Plaza also, given everything Challenger. Sivir's Ed. Alright, so this is going to be a combat-oriented game. We'll see if they're going to be able to give all my stuff vulnerable. Alright, I'm just going to send these back. I could see keeping that hourglass to protect against vulnerable. But I want to be able to curve out a little better.
We got a lot of our five drops. We only have four or five mana cards in our deck for the top end. And as you can see, we've already drawn three of the four after mulliganing one. Not fantastic. <laughs> I'm just complaining because I'm just jealous. My opponent has champions and I don't. <laughs> so I'm just jealous. Uh, I don't think, th or I don't know. I don't. The question is, I, will the event have a winning side of some sort? And I don't know. I guess I, I guess that's just basically my answer. Is I, I don't know. I don't need rules to know good from bad. In and out. Got one more plus one, plus one in me. Oh no. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Okay, hourglass is nice. So we talked about. As I've talked about plenty, barriers are really well positioned in these battles of just, you know, quick attack v quick attack. A bar you know, like, there's not things that are busting up the barriers. Barrier is uh, really well positioned. And so, like, this deck playing four of those lifesteal barriers, I think, it, or sorry, three of those uh, lifesteal barriers, I think, is really good right now. Could have challenged, you know, like, with one of these things and, and made it safer for the auction staying alive, but I wanted... To, I wanted to have the quick attack challenge. Oh, come on. <laughs> Why? Steal from the rich and give to the us. Wow. Zed hits a lot harder than Auction does. But if you play Sivir, like Sivir Auction, I think could be a pretty decent deck because then you can play any other region you want. You know, you're not like limited to Ionia. You can play, you know, like Demacia or, or you know, Bilgewater for the different challenge stuff in Bilgewater. You know, you can. You get to go anywhere, and you get to have your core Sharima cards, and uh, can go anywhere. You'll thank me later. You can even play mostly um, Sharima and have Golden Ambassador. I need to block Hourglass, keep the Sivir from leveling up. I should probably just do it just to help stay alive, to be honest. Like, the Sivir's gonna level up, like, whenever I attack. You would think. Yeah, we found all of our five drops. valuable that challenger is. I can have it challenge the young witch. Arda's gonna make a meal of them. Right, it's either predict draw one. I'm not gonna do the plus one plus zero. It's either predict draw card and you'll maybe find like another pump spell or something. Or we could just get a sandstone charger and have the sandstone charger challenge the sivir. 
No, I'm gonna I'm gonna have Ruin Runner challenge Sivir, so then Sivir dies through Twin Disciplines. So I think I'm gonna predict draw a card. I don't know if Tarek's gonna be enough. I can play the Rock Hopper this round. Let's go this. Let's go this route. Lots of cards in their deck that we're, that we're dead to. Lots of cards that we're dead to. Solver is a very good, very good card. Alright, GG's. Alright, Twisted Fate Swain. This will be a deck that probably won't be challenging all of our stuff. <laughs> so that'll be good. And we have some champions. That's also good. And we have a good curve. Which is also good. Don't have our spells to support yet, but I'm expecting the auction to die pretty quickly. Scores to settle, crooks to kill. You know how it is. Get this warlord's palace started. Surprise there. And that's not even necessarily like a card that I want to hourglass because of how easy that thing is to kill. Each life a rare jewel. I do have a backup Tarek if they go like culling strike. Strike isn't really well positioned right now, so I wouldn't be surprised if they don't have too much cooling strike. Chase what you want without mercy. Just gonna kind of keep on playing threats, see what kind of answers they got. I'm always up for a round or two. Blue as the serpent. Okay. Kind of glad not red card. Red card bust up the spell shield. Make it so Tarek dies through Avenus Flock. All sorts of kind of bad things. Let's go. Stands beneath me and wins behind me. I'm gonna go Rock Hopper first, so they play something else. It gets the vulnerable, then Merciless Hunter instead of just Merciless Hunter first. Because again, I'm not not sp scared of red card anymore. Oxplus does help level up Swain. Does three self damage. Good 
It's just so much easier to kill, like, the 3-1 and not let this happen, which... Because I really want this to happen, because I don't want their box to us to be able to challenge the Ruin Runner. Alright, so that's the third one of those. Question mark. One, two, three. Yes, they played three Death Sands. They're a big fan of that card. I kind of want to copy Pill Cascade over and draw two, but I don't want to use any of the either of the other cards first in order to do that. All right, cool. Was this thing focus? Oh, it is focus, isn't it? I should just play this first of the predict draw card. But I guess I'll have more information now What whatever happens here. So I'll have more information on like what to go look for. I can pretty safely assume they are going to be playing a Leviathan. Then they play Swain, and they stun three things. Out here, you're moving, or you're dead. Very good chance that Swain Leviathan combo is going to get us. So now, these are the three that will get stunned. I need to draw a unit to support with Tarek, which I guess I could have just used the gem and then gone and gave Tarek like a real. Thing. Okay. Time to swindle some nice merchants, huh, Karima? If they were nice. That's a unit. They gotta have so much removal over there. Wow, I was expecting something else. Five. Watch your head. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so both of these things won't be won't take damage or die. And they will both be lethal attackers. I have to cast this right now to make it so like there it's a lethal attacker right you know, right there. And so now like they have to block with the Swain. Because they're at eight. These are both lethal attackers. Can't take damage or die. You lack discipline. Wow, Terex taking down Taking down Swain Leviathan combo. Okay, so there we go. Taking down both Swain and Leviathan. By my hand. 
They got backup Swain. Really hope they don't have backup Leviathan. Yeah, please don't have backup Leviathan. Because if they do, then it stuns Taric, Ruin Runner, and Treasure Seeker. Oh, no, come on. Ugh. Well, Taric getting stunned. I just play this other Ruin Runner. Didn't lose any relics on the ride over, did you? No, and I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Well, so we'll have. I'm still good to scrum. Oh, maybe we won't have. Okay, so we'll have three attackers. Let's see how they block. I got three pump spells to use. They gotta do some kind of blocking. I don't think they want to just take 16. Alright, everybody's blocking. So let's have... Y'all trade. And y'all trade. Well, kill Leviathan. Trade with Swain. We're down to eight, though, with these Leviathans doing their thing. We are down to eight. It's only possible I should just let that happen because they have a backup Swain, but this does force them to, you know, spend five mana casting that backup Swain. All right, it's all about Leviathan, basically. Do they have yet another Leviathan? Yes or no? I wanted to use that Astral Protection, you know, on this thing to save it, but... Oh, that could definitely kill me. Really wish I had more... Uh, more life than what I do. But the good thing about them playing these is that they can't play... Now they can't have Swain and Leviathan. But it looks like they're just going in for the kill. Attacks. But I'll still play this because I'm probably going to want to open attack. Let's do this. Sure, you're all shiny and majestic, but can you float? I could certainly try. Ah, uh, Scorch Earth. All right, so right now, I'm going to have 12, 13, 14 Overwhelm. can't do any like little bit of damage can I like if I do this and have this be eight overwhelm I don't think I'm I don't think I can do like the two points of damage that are necessary we played good games but our opponent's decks have been a little bit more tuned than ours, right? Like, that's that's the thing when you play decks that have been out for months. You're going to do better than people trying to build around brand new champions right away. Because we're still trying to test stuff out and trying to figure out. Um. Well, 
Yeah, it just doesn't... Yeah, if I, Okay, so if I would have... Um, do the Vulnerable Swain into the 1-1 one, one, and then attack with the other two... Uh, they'd still just have... Like, the 3-2 blocks the 4-3, those trade, and then my, my 10-power Ruin Runner... Um, well, I guess it was an 8-power. My 8-power Ruin Runner gets... Um, gets blocked by a 2-2, two -two and they they take 6, and they go down to 2. But I don't really have a way to finish the job, and then they still have that Swain available. And this is just lethal here. Too much card draw. It really feels like with these auctions, you know, like this is the first time playing this, this champion, it really feels like you need the second one, right? Like, none of these games, we've never had two auctions. Because, like, the, the first one makes that uh, first landmark, but it's going to die because it's just a two-mana 2-2. Two -two, and so it, it dies really easily to lots of stuff. And so then whenever it dies, you need the second one, right? So that we... The, the countdown happens. Like, that's happened all the time. But we've never gotten, like, the second one to get that second countdown because that second landmark countdown gets you the incredible stuff, right? Like, it can give all your champions everywhere plus two, plus two, and spell shield, and you know, do all sorts of incredible stuff. Alright, no trades for them. I'll take that. Get that valuable card out of out of their hand. Uh, I don't like that though. Let me go with the goat. Goat create the gem. What's up, Tarek? And gem grappling hook. But I. I get this lucky find. I don't love how, like, the grappling hook would take up, like, a lot of my turn, I guess. Shoulder steps, blade sharpened, plant that lead foot. Don't worry, I've danced this a hundred times. For real? This card's pretty cool. Oh, I guess I'm just dead, though. I guess I should have paid attention to Green Blade Duo killing me. I guess I had to go with the grappling hook killing the green blade duo. Uh, all right, auction needs to show up again. This is very first day trying stuff out, right? We're gonna do better with auction in the future. Uh, this doesn't mean that this is not a good champion, right? Just because we're like all all these decks we're playing against, you know, Twisted Fate Swain has been around for months and months. I mean, a year, honestly, it's been around for a year. Um, you know, then really Azir has been around for a long time. Sivir Zed is the best deck right now. Yeah, you know, like this, <laughs> these are tried and true decks that are really good that we're playing against. This is what we lost to with our first one. 
I don't know if it's the exact same person or not. I really hope they don't have Grand Plaza. Grand Plaza just annihilated me last time. And they did a very good job drawing their champion, right? Like, they only have one champion, Viego, so only three copies of Viego in their deck. And my opponent had, you know, Viego in round five. We killed it. They play another Viego immediately. Also, on the other hand, champions are important. We're not very good at drawing our champions. Come on, auction. Help us get a win. No auction. <laughs> yeah, Beecher says these ranked people have no, no uh, chill for them. for us to just want to try new things. If it's made of sand, I can ride it. This card's awesome, Camouflage and Soldier. A bunch of three power things. The 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 biggest problem with playing another rock hopper right now is that they have another one of these Camavoran soldiers. Then yeah, if they have another one of those, that's the biggest problem. Amuni says mostly once event. Is it just me or is Shen Jarvan absolutely ridiculous right now? Yeah, no, Shen, Shen Jarvan's wonderful right now. Uh, there's not really the decks that go too much underneath it. Jarvan's just awesome right now. It, it really is. That's a, that's a great card. Uh, I'm going to just play another one. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult deck to beat, for sure. Jarvan's in the top, I don't know, top five of champs right now. Top, you know, easily top ten. Maybe top five of um, just champions right now with how uh, the metagame is positioned. Tarek! We got a champion! Let's go! She waits for me beyond the mist, my queen. Okay, so let's see. If we support you, we have all y'all attacking. We copy over like a shape stone. Uh, I guess I, I can really just go ahead and play this thing. I have the mana. Try to take out Viego with this other shape stone. This is rather dumb. Is it Glimpse Beyond or Vile Feast? I'm guessing Glimpse Beyond. It could be Sharp Side or Single Combat. Right, they are Demacia. Those Demacia cards are amazing. I hope it's not those. I hope it's either Vile Feast or Glimpse Beyond. Ah, uh, single combat. Well, it's worth trying. That just worked out terribly, though, because now, yeah, we don't even get to create the lucky finds. It was a trap. I should have just passed priority as well. Taking my lucky find. Auction! What's up? Auction, cool. Yeah, we could turn it to... Could turn into a harsh metagame again. Of 
Punish is good against both Jarvan and, yeah, it's very good against uh, Viego. But Hydravine kind of unbeatable. Good people don't look the other way. I am surprised this Hydravine's attacking. Oh, no, I'm surprised that thing's attacking. All right, how do I, I need to level this thing up? So I need Lucky Find Gem. I don't know, maybe I should have blocked with the 3-1. I guess I'm probably gonna have to cover up this palace. Hmm. Oh, I am one mana short. Fashion isn't good enough to level up Tarek. For the I can't take damage or die. Oh no! Cause I have to I have to do three you know three things before it supports. Level up before it supports. Stand resolute. Man. One more mana, come on. It's disappointing. Hmm. Need like quick attack. So that's so unfortunate. We were just one away from like these can't take damage or die, and that would have been really nice to have. And one away from killing them. Man. Yeah. Well, GG's, Viego. This is obviously with the Viego level, this is over. I can't do two damage. Alright, so that was really disappointing. Unfortunately, we didn't get a win with our auction deck. Um, Viego's looked really strong, right? It's 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 looked a little easier just to put Viego and the uh, different Encroaching Mist cards. Both those Encroaching Mist cards are incredible. So just putting those with Viego, um, you know, fairly easy. Auction's been more difficult to build around. Um, you know, it's our first, our very first auction deck, and it just didn't like. It's not. I don't think it was bad. I think it just you know still needs still needs a little work. Um, but Auction definitely looks like a champion where you really need the second one, as I was talking about, because this first one is just so vulnerable. It's just going to die to so much stuff, especially with, like, Merciless Hunter being such a widely played card. Um, but, you know, it's weak to everything, you know, Mystic Shot and so on. And so, like, your first one's getting that Warlord's Palace in play, and then your Warlord's Palace is doing its thing, and it's going to count down. And, and, uh, and so even if, like, like, let's say you just play Auction, they kill it immediately, and then your Warlord's Palace countdown happens, which it's going to happen all the time. Then you get to um, predict and draw a card, right? So zero mana, predict, draw a card. Like, that's that's really good. Just a good place to start. But you really want that second one, because then that second one's going to be leveled up. And then it's making that Warlord's Horde. And this Warlord's Horde, you get these three options, which are all am amazing. And we're just na never able to do that. We never got to auctions. And so that's kind of unfortunate there. Could see going with uh, Sivir, right? Like Sivir is just kind of like the the king of Sharima right now, um, or I, I guess queen. But you know, <laughs> um, 
Uh, so you know, could could see pairing auction and Sivir together uh, with you know the different vulnerable stuff to help take advantage of the auction quick attack. And then you can play a mostly all Sharima, you know, maybe splash a little like Demacia for like Sharp Sight and stuff, um, or, you know, splash whatever re other region you want. Um, if you do something like that, you could maybe even uh, be playing, if you go enough Sharima, you could even go like Golden Ambassador. I think that could be kind of nice of like having it so um, Auction would then be a 4 4 instead of just a 2 2, and it would help it stay alive a little bit. Um, so, you know, you could maybe maybe try that with, like, Golden Ambassador and Siphoning Strike. Those are some ways that you can be buffing up your auctions also. But, yeah, we'll definitely try out. There's lots and lots and lots of different champions to be playing with it. Um, you know, you have, yeah, there's <laughs> you can go all sorts of different regions as, as far as, like, finding what, uh, ways that you want to either have a landmark or things that you want to target your own allies. You know, if you want to go towards, like, Draven and Riven and... All sorts of stuff like that. Um, also, auction with Talia, I think, could be kind of cool if Talia can uh, copy the landmarks, especially if you can get your second auction and get this Warlord's Palace and then and have Talia copy it. That's another way that you could do like a mostly all Sharima deck. All right, but there we go. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button and leave those comments of like what what are you trying with auction? I'd love to love to hear your thoughts and uh, your ideas. Right, y'all on YouTube, leave those ideas. Let me know. Um, you know, what do you, what do you want to see with auction? What kind of pairings and everything like that? So, um, all right, but that's going to be it here for auction Tarek. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.